Good morning, it's Sunday the 16th of May 2021. I'm a tad late in recording this week, but I'll explain why. Um, I'm three days in bed. <laughs> Not because I'm a lazy so-and-so, which I can be at times, but because I was proper poorly. And it's really strange because, uh, in a way, I ate myself ill. And I don't mean that in the sense of I over-ate and made myself ill. What happened was last weekend, I had run out of my usual fire yogurt to put on my fruit and cereals for breakfast. And Joe has um, soya yogurt, plain soya yogurt, which is free on plan. What make is it, Joe? Asta's. Asta's own. And uh, I've never, ever fancied soya yogurt. Just the thought of it. I don't usually like soya milk, but actually we've found one now that I do like. But I've never fancied soya yogurt. I'm one of those people that if you suggest I had a cup of mint tea or ginger tea, I'd think, no, just don't fancy that. If you suggested I had a cup of black coffee, I'm a bit, no, just don't fancy that. And in fact, I'm actually off coffee at the moment. I've been off coffee for weeks, which is, again, very unlike me. But back to the basic story. So I ran out of fire yoghurt. Joe had soya yoghurt in big tubs. And so he weighed out a portion of soya yoghurt in place of my usually um, small tub of fire. Free, both of them free on plan. And I ate it and I said to Joe, that is really nice. It's not at all what I expected. I always expected soya yoghurt would be a bit sort of grainy or, I don't know, have a weird texture and a weird aftertaste. And it didn't have either. It is really nice. As I say, it's free on plan. It's creamy. It's a little bit more pourable than some yoghurts. But because I was putting it with muesli or Weetabix and fruit, it was lovely. So I said, I'm going to stick with this. We've got it in the fridge. No point buying any other yoghurts. I'll stick with this. So for about five mornings in a row, I'd had about 160, 170 grams of soya yogurt on my fruit and cereals. Well, on Tuesday night, I woke up in the middle of the night and honest to God, I have never had pain like this. And since 1991, when I finally had my gallbladder removed uh, because I regularly had bouts of cholecystitis, and anybody who's had gallbladder problems will stand alongside me and telling you just how painful it is. Well, since 1991, I've never had a reaction in the same way I was reacting. I felt like I've got gallbladder problems, but in the wrong place, lower down on the left-hand side, and I was in agony. And it went on all night, and, and it made me cry. And I'm not a baby. <laughs> But it made me cry and I was literally on my knees, I was lying flat on my stomach, I was just walking around the house. I was, I mean, if Richard's watching this, he'll relate to when I had gallbladder problems because I went through all of these similar reactions to the pain of gallbladder issues. So that was Tuesday night. Wednesday, it grumbled on all day. And because I'd been up all night, I stayed in bed and I was on and off sleeping, feeling awful being bad-tempered, just totally grumpy. Wednesday night, I, I mean, I carried on eating as normal, so I had my breakfast and everything. Never thinking for one minute it was linked to food. Wednesday night it happened again, and I actually had to wake Joe up at like, I don't know, the middle of, late, very late at night, wasn't it, Joe? And I just like, can you just rub my back? Can you do something? Can you stop this pain? I want my mum. And that's not like me. <laughs> I want my mum. That made Joe laugh. And I was in tears. And again, it went on for several hours, then it seemed to ease off a bit. Thursday, felt dreadful again all day. Couldn't go walking, didn't have any energy, stayed in bed. Then uh, Thursday night into Friday morning, it happened again. But it happened in the very early hours of the morning. And I woke Joe up again, and this seems really an unfair thing to be doing, I thought. And then it suddenly dawned on me because I actually by then had started vomiting and really felt awful. Exactly like having cholecystitis. Exactly like it. And it, I was lying on the bed with my head over a bucket feeling really ill and really sorry for myself and something went click in my head. Soya yoga. And Joe was in the room 
um, sitting in my rocking chair in the room, and I said to him, what do you think are the symptoms of a reaction or allergy to soya? And he said, I don't know, ask Alexa. I asked Alexa and she listed quite a few of the things that were happening to me. I had been really badly constipated. I'd started vomiting. I had these dreadful pains in my stomach. Oh, it was just unbelievable. I can't tell you. I was on the verge on Wednesday night, Thursday morning of ringing an ambulance. I felt so ill. And it never really wore off during the day. So I said to Joe, I'm not going to eat anymore. Not going to. Not going to eat anymore. The Nottinghamshire accent was coming out then. I'm not going to eat any more soya yoghurt and see if it changes. So Friday morning, didn't have soya yoghurt with my breakfast. Yesterday morning, didn't have soya yoghurt with my breakfast. By Saturday morning, I was up at my normal time, having a bath and going out walking. It's gone. And all I can say is, you know, I haven't had any medical help with this. But just from a common sense perspective, it was the soya yoghurt. Now, I've been having soya milk for a couple of weeks. And that's one that Joe found, because I don't usually rave about soya milk. I'm usually a hemp milk person or a coconut milk, which I understand is in soya, but it's got coconut in it. But Joe found a soya milk, a new one in Asda, which is only like 85p a litre. And it's only 19 calories for 100 mils. You can have it as an A choice, you can have 400 mils as an A choice. And it's unusual for me to find a milk that I like, which is actually an A choice. I usually have to sim it. Because my hemp milks and that I have to sim, my coconut milk I have to sim. So, and my hemp and coke, no. What was the other one I was having? A hemp and oat. That's how I had to sim. But this um, hemp milk, oh, hemp, listen at me. This soya milk from Asda at 85 pence tastes nearer to cow's milk than anything I've ever tasted. If I put it on cereals, I would be hard pressed to say it wasn't cow's milk. If I put it on in coffee or tea, more tea, because I'm not drinking coffee just at the moment, but if I put it in a cup of tea, it doesn't separate like a lot of soya milks and almond milks do. So I'm really impressed with that. And for 85p, it's an absolute bargain. I don't know whether that's because it's a new thing on the shelf and it's only 85p and it will go up, but it's a lot cheaper than most of the soya milks on the market today. It's not a long life one, but it does have a good date on it because the current batch that we've got is dated in July, but you find it in the chilled section in Asda, not in the long life section. I think I'm right there, Joanna? Yeah. So yeah, that was me. I mean, I really, really thought I needed an ambulance. I, I've, I've not felt that ill in the 35 years since I had my gallbladder removed. I had my gallbladder removed when I was 36. So it's not 35 years, it's 30 years. I had my gallbladder removed in 1991. And at the time, gallbladders weren't an urgent thing. Like today, lots of young people, and I'm going to say women, I'm not being sexist, but I think this problem does tend to affect women more than it affects men. When I had gallbladder issues, I say I was, it was 91, so I would have been 36, and my doctor, my GP at the time, was an old-fashioned, old-school, older gentleman doctor, and he said to me, you don't, you don't realise, you women, what you do to yourself. This is a serious condition of the fair, fat and 40s. And that's what they used to say. If you're fair, you're fat and you're 40. And I wasn't really fair. I was dark, but fat and 40, I was nearly getting on towards 40 and I was definitely qualified as well and truly fat. But if you're fair, fat and 40, the likelihood, if you're ill, is it's going to be your gallbladder. What I've noticed today is lots and lots of women in their 20s are losing their gallbladders. And I don't know specifically what a gallbladder does for us, except to say it produces bile. And I can't tell you, can you say, Joe, off the top of your head, what bile does for us? I think it emulsifies fats in the digestive system. Right, so basically we need a gallbladder. Yeah. But because we've overworked it by it having to emulsify too much, I'm looking at Joe on camera, by it having to emulsify too much fat, we've buggered it up, haven't we, basically? I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I no. just know but that I'm just thinking, if we don't bile. have a gallbladder, which part of our body takes over doing that kind of work? And I'm guessing it's probably our livers. I think the gallbladder is very close to the liver. But I know that 
I took it very lightly, having to have my gallbladder removed, except to say that I was ill for like 18 months backwards and forwards under the NHS. Then got so ill that they had just started doing um, keyhole surgeries and I was told you can't have keyhole surgery too ill. And on the NHS we only allow like two and a half hours for the operation and yours would take more. So bless him, my father-in-law paid for me to have it done privately and you know I was back at work within a week. It was an amazing recovery from something that would have kept me off for three months if I'd had the open surgery that the NHS were offering. Yeah, looking back, I have messed up my body so much, but I can't tell you this week just how much it frightened me again, having those pains because my brain was working overtime. You know, you start to, as an older person, you start to dread all the very obvious problems that older life and health can go hand in hand with. So, Thankfully, I think it was only soya yoga, and I'm not having that anymore, and I feel tons better. I don't feel 100%, but I feel tons better, and I did go on a long walk with Joe yesterday, and I am dressed and ready to go on a long walk this morning, before the promised thunderstorms that we're going to have later. Right, where am I at this week weight-wise? As I said, I had three days in bed, absolutely no exercise, and... You know, we all know that your basic BMR gives you the number of calories you need to lie in bed. Well, I don't count calories, but I don't think I over ate on those days. I um, got on the scales on Friday morning because that's my usual way for Slimming World. and trying to move it back to Saturday because my group will be back. And when it's back to its proper state, it will be on a Saturday. So I'm trying to um, consciously move my way into a Saturday. But I did weigh in on Friday this week and I weighed in at 10 stone 11 and a half pounds which is a half pound loss on the week which I'm happy with that's great um I'd be happy with the maintain or any small loss at the moment I'm not striving to be a perfect dieter I'm more considerate today of eating better eating healthier trying to use my sims um, in that I do try to use 15 a day like I used to when I first lost my weight. I got myself into a position that I actually think I was scared of having 15 sins a day. I've had myself in a position over the past year that I was scared of eating certain foods, that I was scared of having all three healthy extras. And it's crazy how this fear can build up in your mind. And I'm needing to address those things now. And I'm addressing them by saying to myself, I am entitled to 15 sins a day. I am entitled to three healthy extras if I want them. If I choose to, I can have two healthy extras, as in one A and one B, and I'm still on plan. But if I want a second healthy extra A, and I'll have cheese with it, that's fine too, because that is plan. I've never gone below five sins, but I have often lived between seven and ten, with a fear of going over ten and putting weight on because of it. And I don't want those fears in my life anymore. I want to live a much more comfortable, much more relaxed life. Joe and I were talking when we were walking yesterday about speed and we've been very much focused on speed foods. And most of the vegetables that you buy that you really like, Joe, are speed, aren't they? Coincidentally. Yeah. Your broccoli, your cauliflower and all and all those sort of Brussels sprouts and things. He's a bit of a green freak, is our Joe. I'm not. I can eat broccoli, like a florette or something. I couldn't eat a whole head like he does. What I found is that I was neglecting the, some of the fruits that I really, really enjoy, like the mango, the papaya, um, not pineapple, I'm not a big fan of pineapple, but good cherries when they're in season, and uh, um, ki golden kiwis, things like that, because they weren't speed. So I consciously sat down this week and I looked at the calorie differences and they're not massive. I mean, one of the things I like is cherries, but I like fresh cherries. We had some frozen cherries, but we both agreed they were way too sour. Um, I like cherries. And when they're in season, I like grapes. I like red grapes. I like green grapes. I like black grapes. But I don't tend to opt for them because they're only free. Only free. Free food is what I should be focused on. So I'm trying this week to take out, or this last week and going forward, to take out this speed, speed, protein, fibre, whatever. 
If it's free, it's free. Now I know that meat and eggs and fish and stuff like that are going to be protein. I know I've got um, I've got enough protein in my diet. I don't eat meat or fish at every meal. I've had a bacon sandwich for my breakfast. It was a bee choice and four sins. I don't like bacon medallions, they're too dry. I'm comfortable with that. First bacon sandwich in about three years. I enjoyed it. I can understand why my bestie says she's 98% vegetarian, but she loves a bacon sandwich occasionally. I get it now, do I? I really do. Um, but I would avoid eating things like grapes and in-season cherries and things because they're not speed. I think there's too much focus in my life at the moment on aiming for speed rather than aiming for food that I enjoy, that satiates me, that gives me pleasure and that is on plan. What I was doing, I was making this lifestyle into a diet plan. Subconsciously or consciously, I'm not sure which. But I was striving too much to be on a diet and not enjoying my food. And when I get into that state, then I can get very much to the place where I don't want to eat, can't be bothered because I'm not enjoying it. So this week I am striving to aim for up to 15 sins and not sell myself short. And I'm striving, striving to aim for focusing on free food, whether it's speed, whether it's protein, whether it's fibre, whatever. If it's free and I enjoy it, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to be doing it again. So I'm talking to my mother too much and my Nottinghamshire accent is coming back. I am going to enjoy it. I think it's crucial to enjoy our food because I was watching a video this morning and an American lady who lost a lot of weight, put it back on again and is very, 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 extremely slowly losing it again and realising that she's plant-based and that's what I try to be. A plant-based diet made me gain weight. It doesn't suit everybody. But did I enjoy it? Sometimes I did, most of the time. If I'm totally honest, I was bored to death with it. And having boring food is not the same as having food that you enjoy. Food that you enjoy for me will keep me on track. Food that's boring for me makes my mind think, hmm, what can I have as well? What can I have instead? What can I have because I'm resentful? And I don't need to operate in those ways today. I need to be enjoying my food. And I don't need to eat massive portions today. I need to eat a satiating amount. And if that means eating smaller portions, but not minute, if that means eating smaller portions of several things on my plate, rather than big portions of two or three things on my plate, I'm going to do it. I want to sit down and be excited with my food again. The way I was when I first joined Slimming World six years ago. And that's why the weight came off. That's why I went from 22 stone to 13 stone 8, joined Slimming World at 13 stone 8 and lost 5 stone. At my lowest weight I was 120 pounds, 8 stone 8. And I got there not by strictly dieting, but by eating the right foods and enjoying them. And that is why I am totally not a calorie counter. Because if I was a calorie counter, I know the way my mind works. I would eat the food I love, because I could squeeze it into my 1500 calories for the day, but I wouldn't be eating the healthy way Slimming World encourages me to eat, which is focusing on the free food for health. So, right, that's me done for. Um, we are going to go walking now. I say I want to beat the thunderstorms, which are coming. And we're going to go forward in the week, and I'm just thankful, praise God, I feel better today than I have done for a week. And I just want to pass out a couple of thank yous to Marcia and Fatima, who have had my back all week. Thanks, girls, and love to all of you. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Stay safe. Bye.